You're listening to the Wordslinger Podcast, episode 80, The Fascinating Life of Arnold Logan. Writing a book. It can be the best way to build or grow your business, or to simply tell the story that you wish to tell. Learn how to write your book in 30 days or less. Pick up 30 Day Author today from Amazon, Apple iBooks, or other online retailers. It's the Word Slinger Podcast, where story matters. Build your brand, write your book, redefine who you are. It's all about the story here. What's yours? Now, here's the guy who invented pants optional, Kevin Tomlinson, the Word Slinger. Word Slinger. Hey everybody, this is Kevin Thompson, the Word Slinger. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have to apologize. I have to apologize. Because for like two weeks, you didn't hear anything from the Word Slinger. And I, I'm really sorry about that. Um, let me tell you what happened. Okay, so first of all, uh, we finally uh, got a chance to take the RV, the new RV, out for a long road trip. Uh, we did, and this was a good one. I mean, we drove up first through Kansas, uh, then you know we kind of hooked around uh, through Nebraska and then into Colorado. We ended up at the Garden of the Gods in Colorado. We ended up at the Garden of the Gods RV Resort in Colorado specifically, and uh, we we rented a car once we were there, and just sort of ranged out. Now I got a chance to hang out with uh, my good friend and co-author and. Uh, you know, podcast co-host, uh, Nick Thacker, uh, who lives in Colorado Springs. So we got to hang out for a few days, got to hang out with his wife. He finally got to meet my wife. That was a, that was a banner moment. Uh, so we had a good time and, uh, you know, we, there was, there was some adventure. There was some adventure. There were, uh, some dramatic moments, uh, some painful moments <laughs> and a whole lot of scary moments. Um, I will tell you this going in through Kansas, well, let's let's just say that this time of year is a uh, tornado season, and uh, Kansas, of course, is known for torna- tornadoes. Uh, in fact, the instant we got to our campground in Kansas, we uh, and it was Gooding, Kansas, home of the giant um, Van Gogh painting, the giant Van Gogh, uh, the the uh, sunflower painting. Man, I'm just really kind of wrecking this story. Anyway, we got there, and just as we were uh, leveling the RV. The weather band radio kicks on to tell us that there are t- tornado sightings, <laughs> and as everyone knows, if you are uh, if you want to avoid tornadoes, the very best place to be is in an RV in an RV park in Kansas. Uh, so we we managed to get through the night, and it wasn't as bad as uh, we feared. Everything kind of went our way. We were fine with it. Um, we left the next morning. I met a very uh, a nice very nice gentleman named uh, Larry Satchel who is also, he's full-timing right now with his wife, and um, I met them at that that campground, and then we met them again at the Garden of the Gods RV Resort in Colorado Springs. Isn't that cool? That's just, well, that's one of those things that I'm looking forward to when we're on the road full-time, is just meeting up with everybody. So, <laughs> so that was pretty awesome. Um, anyway, long story shorter, um, we, uh, we, I drove for like, you know, anywhere from 8 to 12 hours a day, for most of that trip, unfortunately, this wasn't the kind of trip where we were, you know, let's just range out and when we get tired, let's stop for a day or two. It was, you know, we, we need to be in these spots by these times. So when, whenever we do that, it's exhausting because I have to drive the whole time. <clears throat> and unfortunately, that doesn't leave a lot of time for writing uh, and it doesn't leave any time for the podcast. So that was a difficulty. And then when I did have time, I had some technical glitches. Um, uh, Wi-Fi, by the way, not great. The free Wi-Fi in the parks, not that great. So if you ever had any uh, illusions about that. Now, I think I can get a booster. I'm working on all this, folks. I'm working on it. Um, If you have tips, by the way, (laughs) feel free to share them. Go to wordslingerpodcast.com. Share any tips that you have learned, any resources you've come across. I know tons of uh, bloggers and podcasters about this. We're starting to learn. We're learning a lot. So it was a good inaugural trip i I think we uh we really enjoyed ourselves we got a lot out of it we're definitely looking forward to moving into this thing full-time in october um so there you go that's why you haven't heard from me for two weeks or so uh i really apologize i tried to get everything recorded in advance it's just you know everything leading up to that trip also kind of put the kibosh on that uh i'll work it out i'll get a system worked out 
we'll have this all figured out. So anyway, uh, real quick housekeeping before we get into the interview, which you're, you're going to love this interview. Um, I'm talking to to Arnold Logan, and he has this, uh, it, it's true, it's, he has a fascinating life. It's, <laughs> it's really kind of bizarre how he downplays it. Um, anyway, before we get to that, um, if you would like to help support this show, especially as we're getting on the road full time, you can do that at by uh, committing to our uh, Patreon campaign. So you can find that if you go to wordslingerpodcast.com. There's a big Patreon button right there on the homepage, but you can also find it on each episode. And, and as little as a dollar a month would be very helpful. I have this big goal. I want to raise $5,000 a month in uh, revenue for the show, and that will help pay for. Um, well, for everything, I can I can afford to hire people to produce the show. I can uh, actually imp- improve the production quality of the show, um, which I think I think we do okay. I think we do okay. But you know, I want to give you guys even more, and, and that's also for developing programs around it, uh, things that I think would be helpful to you as an entrepreneur, as a writer, or whatever you happen to be. Why why you listen to this show uh, is up to you, but it, the I think I can help you more, and I think I can build a bigger, better community for you that supports you in your dreams and goals. So that said, if you'd like to help kick in and support that and help it grow check out the Patreon campaign, and I appreciate that. You can also support this show by buying a copy of 30 Day Author, which is, uh, you know, you heard that ad at the beginning of the show. That's my book that teaches you how to develop a daily writing habit. And uh, you can write a book in 30 days or less. I mean, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't even have to be 30 days. You can write a book in a year if that's more your thing. But this is about developing that daily writing habit. I recommend everybody write a book. Everybody, I don't care who you are, and I don't care what your background is. If you have a book, it increases your credibility, it increases your reach, it gives you something to to break a conversation open with. You can have a conversation about the book itself. That gives you a nice icebreaker. It's the ultimate business card. So if you're in business at all, or if you ever want to succeed in any field, no matter what it is, I recommend writing a book. So pick up 30 Day Author, and that will show you one of many techniques you can use to write uh, in, in, as quickly as you'd like. <laughs> so uh, you can also pick up any of my other books uh, I just released. Now, I'm go- I've am i been saying it wrong, I've realized. Uh, I've been informed that the, the word is Coelho, not Coelho. Uh, so the Coelho medallion has, has released officially. It released on May 31st, and it was huge. It was a huge release. I had so many people. <clears throat> the pre-orders were outstanding. I had so many people pre-order that book. And then uh, those who uh, picked it up uh, really loved it. I'm, I'm, I'm now combing for reviews, trying to get as many as possible. Uh, you know how this goes. You, you write a book, everyone loves it. Uh, getting them to review it takes, it's like pulling teeth. But <laughs> if you've read it, please review it. Uh, if you haven't read it, go pick it up. Quelo Medallion. You can find that on my website at kevintomlinson.com. Or if you just search uh, I know it's going to be hard to spell that title. So if you just go search my name, Kevin Tomlinson, on Amazon, you'll find it. Uh, I'll try to put links to it in the show notes as well. So enough of that. We've spent eight and a half minutes talking about that stuff. Now let's let's spend some time talking to Arnold Logan about his fascinating life and the books that he's writing and publishing. So stick around for that. And afterward, I'll do a quick wrap up and we'll get you on your way. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, now today I'm talking with an author who is, uh, he's he's getting ready for what I consider a fairly, uh, a kind of a big release really, because uh, as someone who doesn't actually have books in bookstores right now, I can appreciate someone who is actually doing a full bookstore launch <laughs> and actually uh, getting in uh, on shelves and doing signings and that sort of thing. So I'm talking with author Arnold Logan. He's the author of Springtime in Lawrence Park. Which is uh, set now, um, Arnold, you're in North Toronto, it says. You were born in North Toronto. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. Okay. That's now, where the book is set, too. And yeah. that's where the book is set. Okay, so um, that's kind of perfect. And I, as you and I were discussing before the, the interview started, um, my wife and I, we were actually in Toronto um, a few weeks ago. We we're thinking, I'm thinking late March. Uh, I don't remember the exact dates. People who listen to the show will probably know and tell me <laughs> exactly when I was there. But it's kind of beautiful up there. Um, so tell me a little. Let's let's start by um, give me kind of the breakdown, the premise of the book itself. 
Okay, essentially, uh, it's a bit of a crime novel as well as um, a picaresque kind of social history novel. Mm-hmm. If I can combine those and <laughs> sure, <laughs> there's <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then there's the family. Mm-hmm. which is like one of the oldest families in Canada since they came before, you know, the first white man sort of to set foot mm-hmm. <laughs> here. And maybe not the first because those were uh, people, the Vikings who landed in, in, Green, in Newfoundland. But right, right. they're maybe the second wave, I guess, of <laughs> Europeans. Yeah. Right. And they have, you know, this long history and, and uh, many branches to their family because over the centuries they grew and, and spread across the country. Mm-hmm. And this particular branch of the family is kind of uh, sunk in onto a bit of hard times. Okay. And then they have a crisis uh, that hits them. And then they have um, Marie Barnacle is born into their family, and they have already two sons, and they had a daughter previously, but that's part of the uh, the story is what happened to her, right. named Susan Pretty. And when Marie is born, she becomes the uh, the locus of the family's energies. Okay. And they start to kind of revolve around her, and that's kind of the theme of the story: how the family's trying to define her as a person and she's trying to achieve some kind of autonomy for herself as she grows up, you know, and discovers who she is and and it's that, that crisis or conflict and that challenge and the thread of change which is resisted and yet courted at the same time that is kind of a theme of the book. Okay. So, uh, aside from the the relationship to Canada itself, and right, and there's several trips to America. Like they go to Florida. At one point, she's in Florida. At one point, she's in North Carolina, mm-hmm. and she visits India as well as part of her uh, growing okay. up. <laughs> yeah. So a little bit of an international feel there. <laughs> Slight right. international. Always helps, I guess, to throw in, you know, some some beauty spots and take the reader right. on some journeys, right? Right, exactly. Um, <laughs> so you um now I'm looking at your bio by the way. You have a you have an interesting life. It says that you were you were born in North Toronto but you uh you went to boarding school in England. That's interesting. Yeah, I I did. <laughs> Certainly <laughs> Well, something, yeah, interesting is a good word without any connotation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, okay, you put it in your bio. I, was, I figured that must have added some color to the to your life, at least a little, right? <laughs> oh, it did, for sure. But you uh, yeah. you basically ended up working on a, it says a Southern Ontario dairy farm. <laughs> and then <laughs> I like how you've worked in, like, uh, from fiberglass factories to horseback riding uh, with the king of Nepal. Now, I have to know, <laughs> I have to know the full scope of both of those things. <laughs> okay. Well, it sounds maybe more exciting in one sentence than, you know, the actual facts. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the point no. of a bio, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I certainly learned a lot about farm life <laughs> yeah. in southern Ontario. Yeah, and the added, you know, I mean, it was only one farmer I met. Well, I met several farmers, but this one dairy farmer was real character, and I, I stole a bit of his life and put it in the book yeah. as well, which where he he loved to stick his pitchfork into uh, the cows when they didn't, you know, do what he wanted to. <laughs> Okay. Which is pretty surprising. <laughs> it's a good way to get a reaction, I guess. <laughs> I guess, yeah. That can't yeah. be the most fun experience for the cow, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so what about yeah, riding a horseback with the king of Nepal? <laughs> Where does that come in? <laughs> well, that's really, you know, I was 
trekking through Nepal, and I happened to come upon the king on, on his horse, and, you know, we, I was walking, he was riding, to tell the truth. Yeah. So okay. we kind of traveled along the path together a bit. And then you know, when I got to Muktinath, uh, as the, the editor of the book, which maybe I'm confusing things, but he invited me to his summer palace there. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> You're kind of downplaying some of your bio here, Arnold. I got to tell you, because <laughs> a lot of so first of all, um, most people don't travel to Nepal in the first place, uh, and of those who might, I'm guessing the majority probably don't end up walking alongside the king of Nepal while he's on horseback, <laughs> or get invited to the palace. <laughs> so you've had uh, you've had some well, color in your life, I think. <laughs> It was pretty fortuitous. Like I'm, I'm just you know actually looking out the window here, and I saw three beautiful deer on my lawn, mm -hmm. and so things just happen right fortuitously, and you never anticipate them, but they, they stay with you, right? Right. Yeah. That's uh, that's kind of and as an author, I'm guessing that's uh, well, I'm not guessing. I'm speaking from personal experience, but I mean as an author, that's something mm -hmm. pretty valuable is that ability to uh, look around you and see those little surprises in your life, right? I think, you know, when you, you've kind of gone through a difficult childhood, like Marie Barnacle did and like I did, it really helps to have those moments of serenity where something seems to come from the great beyond, maybe, or even in a mystical sense, appear in your life and restore your faith and yeah. In it, I think, you know. Yeah. So is that uh, is that kind of what pushed you to write this book in the first place? Like, what led to you actually deciding to write the book? Well, uh, it was a crisis. I mean, it's kind of a weird situation. I've, I've wanted to write really since I was six. Okay. <laughs> and I first encountered Charles Dickens in grade one, and I didn't understand him, you know, but something about it got to me and there were several other like you know kind of indications or, or messages along the road but for various reasons and there are I mean certainly my own life and memories are, are kind of twisted together like a strand of DNA right because you know her family and my family were very not willing to let go and see you know yeah the chrysalis turn into a butterfly sort of thing. So I didn't get down to writing till these later stages of my life. And, uh, and a tragic event kind of triggered it, which I won't go into, but it was suddenly I realized that, you know, this was a moment and I had to put it together and, and it just started flowing out of me. And, uh, you know, at least the first draft, right? Right. It wasn't that easy right. afterwards to to the redrafting. That was fun, but you know the redrafting took uh, a lot longer than oh, the initial yeah, yeah production, you, you which I'm that. sure you know because you're a yeah. writer too. <laughs> yeah, <Right. laughs> I'm in the middle of. Uh, I think I'm actually on the fourth round of rewrites uh, for my current book. Um, which huh. is a little unusual, actually. This is I'm taking a lot more time with this one than I normally would, actually, to be honest with everyone. <laughs> There's normally not four full rounds for me. Um, so you're with, um, I, and I'm guessing they're I'm guessing they're small press. I haven't looked into them directly yet. I, I I've kind of brushed around on the uh, the Fire and Ash Publishers website, um, but you're mm -hmm. so you signed on with those guys. Tell me a little about the, about them. Because right now you're the sure, only title well, they, they're promoting, I'm thinking, right? No, I've got one other book, which is uh, a reprint of an out-of-date Conrad book. Like, Joseph okay. Conrad is, is one of my great heroes, and right. I actually brought the idea to them that this book of his, which is um, collects all the... He, like, basically, when he was older, he they put out a New York edition of his collected works. Okay. And the publisher asked him to write uh, prefaces for each one of his books, which he'd written in the past. Okay. 
And he wrote these brilliant prefaces. I mean, they're just incredible. Mm -hmm. And they were collected in a separate book and published, you know, a few decades ago. And then it went out of print, and I suggested to him that they put this back into print. Mm -hmm. So that's their second. And, and their timing was excellent starting this company because now we have a new government in Canada, mm -hmm. which... Uh, is actually pouring a lot of money into the arts. So apparently right. they're now very excited, you know, at all the chance to, to put out more books. And they definitely seem to to be looking for a longer lifespan. Oh, interesting. I, 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 you know, I haven't heard, we don't hear, we're in America, we don't hear much about what goes on with, with Canada, unfortunately. I mean, and there's, while I was there, it was, I was exposed to so many cool and interesting things. Um, that I wish I had known earlier, but uh, you guys actually, uh, there in Toronto is uh, the home of uh, Kobo. Um, I don't know if you're aware of Kobo. Yes, right. Yeah, but it, yeah, you know, sure. The uh, is it Indigo? Is that the name of the bookstore? The popular bookstore chain. That's right. Right. That's so, like our Barnes and Noble. Yeah. Right. I think they have yeah. a tie with Indigo. I know they. I know they have ties with Chapters. Uh, where they sell like no chapters is owned by indigo okay. it's actually the same company and Kobo okay. was actually um it's funny you mention it because one of the people at fire and ash worked at indigo for like a decade or so okay and he told me the story of Kobo which actually saved the company you know like your book um was it the one that that folded um the one that was competing with Barnes and Noble, what was it called again? Oh, um, I don't know. I forgot. No. <laughs> hey, yeah, I've lost it. <laughs> but <laughs> they're lost to history now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I know what you mean, but I can't. I I'll think of the name. If I think of the name, listeners, I'll put it in the uh, show notes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I, but, yeah, I feel like we're having a private conversation here, yeah. which is great. Uh, <laughs> That's but exactly anyway, what, yeah. so the long story short, yeah, Kobo was actually saved Indigo from going into bankruptcy. Oh, they yeah. they came up with Kobo and then they sold it for like you know a fortune, and that kind of protected them. Yeah, bought them some space to keep going. So yeah, Kobo, and just as you mentioned that we we actually have an ebook of springtime in Lawrence Park, which is coming out shortly. Okay. Because we know, like, we do definitely want to reach out to American audience. Right. You know? Right. And I've lived there. I've been in Texas uh, a fair bit, and I really liked it, actually. Really? What, what part of Texas were you in? Yeah. Well, I was actually a big hitchhiker. And I was hitchhiking all over Texas. Arnold, man, you are uh, you are de you're completely underselling yourself here. You <laughs> you have a very fascinating life. <laughs> okay, so where were you, where did you hitchhike in Texas? Uh, you know, Texas. Actually, I got to tell you, and in all honesty, I've I've been most of America. I wouldn't say all of it, but the friendliest people in America are the Texans. That was my experience. Yeah, like, I think so. They were really nice. <laughs> and the food, man, I had, like, I remember, like, one time I was wa I was starving, practically, and I walked into this little town, and there were these uh, black people or African-Americans mm -hmm. sitting, standing around this open fire, mm -hmm. and they were cooking these, you know, these brisket sandwiches or something, and... And I went up and I bought one. I mean, they were like looking at me. What are you doing here, white boy? You know, but, uh, they, <laughs> you know, they sold me a sandwich and I'll never forget the taste of it. It was like the most delicious thing wow. I ate, you know? Yeah. yeah. We do brisket. That's for sure. We <laughs> Texas does brisket. Okay. Well, that's 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 cool, man. Yeah, I'm just waiting to hear what you're going to tell me next because you, you're a very unassuming kind of guy on the phone. We haven't met in person, so I can't judge you by uh, your, you know, your physical presence. But uh, you know, so far on the phone, you're you're a very unassuming kind of person, and then you'll drop these bombs like, "Oh yeah, I was walking alongside the the uh, king of Nepal," or <laughs> "I hitchhiked across Texas." <laughs> yeah, well, I never met the Bushes when I was in yeah, Texas. Yeah, well. but they're in my book. I refer to them. I don't know if you've read the book, but there's a 
section where I talk about the Bush family. Right. So hopefully right. your readers might find that amusing. <laughs> yeah, that'll be, uh, yeah. No, well, no, I haven't, uh, we set this whole interview up kind of, kind of quickly. And then I went to a couple of writers conferences in between and I never got like a, an arc or anything. So we, we'll, uh, I'm going to have to make sure that it's, you're releasing it. Uh, I saw that you're doing a big release today, right? Tomorrow, actually. Tomorrow. The launch is, yeah, tomorrow. Okay, so for the but listeners... I'll get, I'll get a copy sent out to you, for sure. Oh, perfect, no yeah. Well, I'll, I don't I'll mind. ask the guys to send you a copy. I don't mind yeah. buying it. <laughs> it sounds like it's going to be an amazing <laughs> read. Uh, for the listeners, um, oh, we're, you, know, you and I are talking, uh, it is the, uh, let's see, it's the 26th of April right now, and this will probably go live in a few weeks. Uh, so it'll your book will already be available for people to... Uh, to purchase and download, I'm sure, uh, by then. So right. uh, I'll put yeah. links to that in the show notes so that everybody can go find your book. Um, Great. So Great. I wanted to talk a little more about um, the Fire and Ash publishers. How did, how did you become involved with them? Oh, well, uh, that's a bit of a, a long story. I don't know if we should get into that. Hey, we got time. We got uh, time. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Okay, I actually set it up with uh, these two guys. One is like a former Indigo employee, and the other is a, um, a professor of medieval literature. Okay. And we just decided, you know, the three of us to get together and, and set up a publishing company. I didn't want to have to go through the agony of submitting my manuscript and waiting months and maybe even years for someone to publish it. So. Yeah. I invested in this company and we're working together on it. So it's a bit of a, a gambit, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> so the plan was, um, set this up. So you've, you've got, uh, your own publishing imprint then, and then you are, um, uh, you're publishing not just, well, your I'm book. a partner. I'm not, I'm a partner in it. Okay. Yeah. Really my own. Okay. Exactly. All right. And but these guys are doing your book uh, and the Joseph Conrad book, which I was impressed to see that as one of the titles. Now that's another one I'm gonna I'm gonna be checking out. <laughs> oh, as a writer, like every writer in the world should read that book, and oh, not yeah. just because you know we're putting it out, but like you could learn you can learn so much about writing from that his prefaces. Yeah, and uh, it's just incredible to me it ever fell out of print. Yeah, but anyway. No, I, I I can imagine. Uh, now I've read, I've read some of uh, Joseph Conrad's works, not everything, um, but I've enjoy, you know, I enjoyed everything I read. That'll probably prompt me to go read the books that he's prefacing. <laughs> so <laughs> someone's going to make some more money off of <laughs> off of Joseph Conrad books. Um, well, that's interesting though, that because um, I talked to no, I'm I am. Uh, I'm an in independent author. I have a, a whole network of independent authors that um, I collaborate with and work with. And uh, I talk to a lot of indie authors on this show. I don't, I, mm -hmm. it's very rare that I talk to anyone who's gone out and found partners, set up a, you know, a publisher. And, uh, you know, I'm looking through, you know, I've, 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 I don't know who it was I spoke with who was confirming your interview and everything, but, you know, you've got a nice little uh, system going on there that you guys are, are, doing something right how are you funding all of it just through book sales <laughs> well uh, yeah i wish right this is, one can uh, always hope <laughs> yeah yeah i'm still hoping you know the yeah. money's going to come in but mm -hmm. we're borrowing the money actually right, <laughs> at right. this stage right. and hopefully we'll get to pay it back eventually <laughs> right yeah okay well that, you I mean, know it's, but it's, yeah that's you know part of business <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. Um, no, it's a real challenge. Like I know, I'm sure all the other indie authors out there are, you know, engrossed in this challenge of competing with, but in a way it's, it's a plus and a minus, right? I mean, the world has opened up with digital marketing and publishing, and at the same time it's, you know, open the floodgates of everybody who has a book, you know? But you know the old Icelandic thing? That um, in Iceland, apparently, they have a saying that everyone has a book in their stomach. Oh. <laughs> have you I heard that? that? <laughs> no, I have not heard that. <laughs> <laughs> 
so you know it's a free world right and i i guess it's good if, if everyone publishes a book yeah i think so uh yeah. the one of the premises of the show actually now i the every episode of the show opens with like a small ad for my book uh 30 day author and the whole point of that book and uh, some of the advice that I give on the show is that um, I try to encourage everybody to write. And every, I try to get everyone, no matter who you are or what your career is, I try to get everyone to write a book uh, because they're so useful in, um, well, they're useful in promoting you. And, you know, they're maybe they can be a bit of income, but largely they're very useful in helping you discover things about yourself that you may not have known. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you 100% on that. So, and, and you learn a lot of empathy, too, which maybe it expands your empathy, even if you were empathetic before. Yes, I agree with that. Exactly. Yeah. The, so how have you, what are some things you've noticed about yourself uh, in the process of writing this book? You know, actually, in my first interview, this guy asked me a similar question and <laughs> <laughs> and I just came up with, with this answer, which apparently everybody seems to have liked. So, and it's true. Like this whole concept of, um, you know, that when you're young, you're often angry, right? As the world, or at least some people are. Right. And, well, I don't know if you've read Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, yeah. Uh, he, yeah, well, he's a very angry person. Yeah. <laughs> and he commits a murder, right? You know, right. and and then he discovers through this is Dostoevsky's message, and I, I certainly didn't originate it, as I'm, which is why I bring him up. That only through forgiveness can you actually find true freedom. Right. And forgiving others is the first step. You know, according to Dostoevsky, which it seems to me true. The next step is to forgive yourself, because you can't do one until you've done the first one. Right. And that's a very difficult step to get, you know, even to the first step and then the second step. And all of then the light of heaven, you might say, opens up, and you see the world in a different way. Which I think Dostoevsky only experienced when he was having an epileptic fit, but, <laughs> you know. Right. <laughs> It's in theory, it'll work, and it may be in practice. So this is what writing the book did for me. It, it did actually allow me to see the point of forgiveness. Yeah. And I thought, you know, that is kind of a, a really cool thing. You get out of writing, you kind of reach a kind of level of... Um, Maybe get away from the sanctimoniousness that might have infiltrated your life as you're dealing with all the the, the frustrations of existence. Right. Yeah. I don't know. No, that. But that... It, at least it opens up possibilities, right? Exactly. In your own internal life, right? I think it's interesting. Um, I talked to a lot of authors, and this this show isn't specifically uh, aimed. At that, at that market, like I don't specifically go out and find just authors to talk to. I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs and, and people who just interest me, period. Uh, but I end up talking to a lot of authors just because of the nature of my work. And it is interesting to get into conversations with them about why they write uh, and what they get out of it. And I think a lot of them kind of come to some of the same conclusions, you know, that you're, you've come to uh, about you know, maybe not necessarily forgiveness per se, because not everyone's theme is, is forgiveness, but, you know, that sort of internal introspective look into themselves. <laughs> they learn a little bit about themselves. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it also builds your uh, visual imagination. Oh. Like I can, I can see a lot better worlds that don't exist around me. Yeah. You know, just by creating them on paper then you've kind of seems like I've retrained my brain a bit yeah, and expanded its uh, potential. Yeah. So do you find now that you, you're actually, I don't know, noticing something different in the world that you may not have noticed before? Is that what you mean? Yeah. My, my visualization mm -hmm. of imaginary things has improved dramatically. Yeah. That, 
and that's yeah. handy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it, it is for sure. So, um, it, it helps. Yeah. This is your first book. Now, do you have plans for another? Yeah, I've got a few irons in the fire, as you probably say down in Texas. <laughs> Yeah, we might. I've got that. one that I started. Yeah, <laughs> not branding irons, but at least I've got some right. some stuff cooking. Right. So, uh, yeah. what what was the time frame, by the way, for this book? How long did it take you to write this? Uh, it took me actually. The first draft was kind of quick, but then, well, the rewrites, and I have a lot of other stuff going on in my life, like mm-hmm. I've got uh, kids and stuff. So it right. took me. Uh, about two and a half years, actually. Oh, okay. Well, that's not bad. That's yeah. the, my first two books that, uh, that were each about two years uh, to complete, and then uh, decided I needed to write faster. <laughs> so <laughs> I started figuring out ways to knock them out a little faster. But um, what you've got, this is, uh, I guess this would be considered. Um, well, I was going to say literary fiction, but you said there's like a murder mystery and that sort of thing involved in this, so maybe not. Maybe it is. I don't know. What ca- what category are you putting this in? Well, I I consider it more of a literary type of okay. uh, social novel, but it is right. also a crime novel. Okay. And at least, uh, yeah, I've been advised kind of by the team there that it belongs in that category as well. That's Because uh, there is a murder and there is a bit... Yeah, there's murder in there. So right, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> and uh, I hate to admit this. I, mean, I hate to. Uh, I don't want to burst bubbles or anything, but literary novels are are generally very difficult to market and sell. <laughs> so I don't know why that is. It's like they have to be. Uh, they have to get awards and they have to be featured in you know specific newspaper columns and that sort of thing. So. Uh, maybe billing it as murder mystery might actually boost sales a little for you. <laughs> it's not, yeah, really, it's not impossible. You're but, right. Um, all right. No, well, thanks. yeah, yeah you're right. So uh, you've got okay. You've so you've got some irons in the fire. Um, you're now starting to promote this book. I guess you're you're doing some tours. I know you're doing some interviews. Um, what else have you got in mind for uh, like just the general marketing and promotion of the book? Oh, you know, honestly, I don't like dealing with that stuff at all, <laughs> and I prefer to leave it to the uh, the fire and ash team. Well, that's and, fine. That's fine. And, yeah. Yeah. So, so they're trying. They're they're beavering away, but I don't know how much they're accomplishing. Listen, they're if I had a team of guys who were going to go out and promote my book on my behalf, I would definitely sit back and let them do it <laughs> so there's nothing at all wrong with that i did i uh i may have to talk to your guys and see what it takes <laughs> for sure for so sure. i'm sure they'd love to i wouldn't mind yeah. getting a, a more of a canadian presence i'll be honest with you because um first of all i'm meeting more and more people i i've i met some folks who actually are with kobo um there Oh, you backing up? <laughs> oh, you hear that? Yeah, the truck is coming over here. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. Um, I, I, you know, I've I've met some folks who work at Kobo. I've uh, I've got uh, quite a few friends uh, who are authors who are actually living in that area. Um, and and I actually got to hang out with one for at least for lunch. Uh, Jamie Maltman. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's he's an author in in the uh, local Toronto area and. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't mind getting a bigger Canadian presence for my work, so maybe I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll have to chat with you guys at some point. So For sure. Well, uh, for sure. I think, I mean, we've pretty much covered all the really important stuff. Do you, was there anything, uh, now I can I see on your website, or on the uh, Fire and Ash Publishers site at least, that uh, it, people who sign up for the mailing list can get 20% off of the pre-purchase of Springtime right, in Lawrence Park. Right, that's correct. So, uh, yeah. for you listeners, uh, go and, uh, check that out. You can also, uh, while you're on that site, that site is fire and ash publishing publishers.com fire and ash publishers.com. That link will be in the show notes of this episode. And, uh, it looks like they can read, I see you've got a Kirkus review, which congratulations. I, I, I didn't decide to pop on that. I'm kind of scared to, to do that. <laughs> I have this worry <laughs> <laughs> that I'm going to give them I money know and they're going to come back and trash my book. <laughs> 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 so, 
<laughs> so congratulations on a good Kirkus review. <laughs> Oh, um, thanks. So well, I, I hope to get some more, but it's it's, it's not easy to get those. Uh, yeah, I know. I've heard. Yeah. I mean, what was the process in that? I mean, I I know you can just you can kind of sign up, but they have to actually accept the the book, right? I mean, it's not like you can just go pay them something and, they, and hand them a book. Yeah, I think so. Again, uh, I left that to the team. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> Man, I envy your team. I envy yeah. you your team. Um, all right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, we'll wrap everything up here. Uh, I, this has been a great interview, um, Ar- uh, Arnold. I just I, I'm fascinated by. <laughs> I think um, it sounds like I didn't really even scratch the surface of all the interesting things you have done in your life. So maybe we'll have to have you back on sometime and just we'll just talk about <laughs> the adventures of uh, Arnold Logan. Um, yeah, it's like the adventures of Peregrine Pickle. <laughs> I don't know if you know that book. Yes. But <laughs> <laughs> Funny. All right. Well, All right. Sounds well, good. I'll hang out for a second. One question I have for you. You got a quote. Okay, go can ahead. I ask go you ahead. A sure. So, is it true that, like, down there in Texas, everyone says America <laughs> when you say America? <laughs> Maybe in certain parts of Texas, but not not Texas in general. I think. Although I was in. Um, I was in an area of Texas called Mount Pleasant um, this past weekend for the uh, Northeast Texas Writers uh, Organization. They had a conference, and uh, and I will say that I I got a kind of a glimpse into uh, uh, a side of Texas I haven't seen that much. Uh, I grew up in a pretty rural area myself, but th- th- you know we got to see some folks uh, being just themselves. We'll say <laughs> they might they might say Murica. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, why don't you hold on? Uh, don't hang up just yet, and we'll. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the show for the listeners. You and I'll chat for just a second afterward, and uh, everyone else listening to this, I'm sure there's some nifty music playing in your ear right now. <laughs> Stick around for the wrap okay. up for this episode, and thank you thank so you much, Arnold sure. Logan, for being on the show. Okay. Thank right. you. Bye. All right, that was Arnold Logan. I hope you enjoyed that interview. I I um I love talking to authors. I don't know it, even if I weren't an author myself, I think that I would I would enjoy talking to authors. Um, for one thing, authors almost always draw upon their their natural real world experience to inform their story, and so you know when you when you encounter an author who has an interesting book, you know there's got to be an interesting backstory in there, and maybe it's in pieces, you know. Um, I, for one, I mean, I when I write, uh, I draw upon not just any one experience, but the sort of the total of experiences I've had. Uh, any places I've been, any people I've encountered, they're all fodder. <laughs> they're all fodder for the uh, story. So I'm sure uh, I'm sure Arnold was the same way. Um, and uh, you know, I always feel bad, by the way, at the end of an interview when the the guest is um, a little confused about you know, who I'm talking to. I, I hate, I need to find a way to make that more clear. Cause I, I don't want to, I don't want to cause any heartburn for anybody. I want everyone to feel nice and relaxed at the, <laughs> at the end of each interview. We should be buddies. Uh, so I, I kind of threw him off there a little, uh, but that's okay. So I, uh, I also, I want to thank you, um, listeners. Thanks so much for being a part of the show, for tolerating the, uh, you know, all the quirks. I mean, sometimes there's lawnmowers going, I've had that issue today. I actually am recording, uh, a good like five hours later than I had intended, um, because when I sat down to do the first round of recording this morning, the, the uh, yard guys show up and they start, you know, leaf blowers start right under my window and that sort of thing. That's a common thing, and sometimes I go ahead and run with it. Uh, before I recorded this episode, I actually did a quick eight questions interview with Chris Fox. Um, now, if I haven't told you about this already, I am. Uh, you can actually listen to my eight questions interview. I think it went live uh, last Friday. Uh, but eight questions is part of the Sterling and Stone podcast network, and I've been invited to do uh, guest hosting on there occasionally. So I've probably uh, recorded about ten ten episodes so far. Chris Fox was the most recent. We talked about his work. We talked about uh, writing to market. Uh, we talked about his influences. I think you'll really find that fascinating. So. If you haven't already, go search for Eight Questions Podcast on the iTunes Store, and uh, you you might throw my name in there too, so you can find my my interview. 
And if you uh, get a chance, give that a listen and then let me know what you think. Um, of course, review the, uh, the podcast and review this podcast, by the way. All reviews are appreciated uh, and uh, coveted. So if you, uh, if you want to help support the show, that's one fantastic way to do it. Go to iTunes, search for Wordslinger Podcast. Give me, uh, give me five stars. I love five stars. And give me a review. So uh, that helps the show to be more discoverable. It helps me uh, range out and help more people. So very useful, and I appreciate it. Um, but definitely give eight questions a listen because I think you're going to enjoy it. It's it's cool, and there's a different host practically every week. So you're not just listening to me. You're listening to Garrett Robinson. You're listening to uh, Sean Platt, to David Wright, to uh, Johnny Truant. Um, you know, all people you've heard on this show. I've interviewed every one of them except for except for Dave. Dave's a holdout. He keeps promising, but I haven't got him on yet. So <laughs> we'll get there. I, I need I need the complete set. Uh, so anyway, go give that a listen. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'll try to put a link to that in the show notes as well. And uh, otherwise, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up. We're wrapping up kind of early today, aren't we? We're at like 45 minutes. That's unusual. So this is a short episode of the Wordslinger podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Thank you so much for your support. And as we move forward um, in our life on the road, uh, I'm looking forward to sharing more with you. I promise I'm going to work out how to do the podcast uh, while we're traveling. Um, really, it's not that big a deal. If we were going to stay in one place for a, for a time, it wouldn't have been any trouble. So uh, I'm sorry I let you down on that, actually. So I apologize. I, I, I owe you that. So thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to call me at 281-809-WORD, 281-809-9673. That's the Wordslinger hotline. And you can ask me any question you want. I'm serious about that. Any question you want. Now, if it's inappropriate, I won't play it on the air. Uh, but you can ask me anyway. I might even answer. However, uh, it doesn't matter what it's about. It could be about being an entrepreneur. It could be about being an author. Um, self-publishing in particular is something I'm keen to talk about. Any question you want, and I will answer it on the air, and I appreciate you taking the time to do it. And, uh, of course, I would ask, I would plead, I would beg, if if you will, uh, to that you go and pick up a copy of Quelo Medallion which is my newest thriller. That's probably that's the book that's going to set the tone for the rest of my career. I'm just going to put that out there because you know it was written more or less on a dare. Uh, Nick Thacker pretty much dared me to write it. You can read that story, by the way, in the back of the book, in the stuff at the end of the book section. Um, get the full scoop on where this book came from. But I had so much fun writing it. I've had such a huge response to it. The stars really aligned for this book. And uh, I, it's probably the best thing I've ever written. I, I'm 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 about 98% sure it's the best thing I've ever written, uh, and it definitely has changed the direction of my career uh, because I believe writing thrillers is something uh, I'm I'm pretty much meant to do. I, I I enjoy the idea of the contemporary story, the the fantastic and far out stuff can be part of it still, um, but it just meshes really well with my personality. So I'm gonna finish up the the books that I have started. The series I have started, I'll round everything off, so don't worry. No one's getting left behind. And I may, I'll may, i probably still write some of that stuff in the future, but I'm thinking thrillers are the direction for my career. So let me know what you think of that. I'd, I'd love to hear your opinion. So anyway, again, uh, if you want to call, ask me any questions or make any comments, call me at 281-809-WORD, 281-809-9673. And you can go to wordslingerpodcast.com and leave me an email. And don't forget to click on that Patreon campaign. <laughs> and support the show we'll grow we'll grow together all right thank you and take care everybody god bless i hope you have a fantastic weekend and i'll see you next week